here's the Rubicon all cleaned up. I uh, painted the wheels that color instead of black. The plastic's all look brand new. This thing was detailed, I should say. It wasn't cleaned, it was detailed. Look at that shine. Okay, tires are shined up. Floorboards are shined up. Red's all shined up. Snorkel shined up. This thing right here don't have any screws in it. That's a problem. I want to get that fixed because they stripped out and fell out, you know, because Honda makes a pile of garbage. Um, but anyways, today's video is going to be good. Uh, we're either going to go to Lake Hauser with a couple buddies again, which I really kind of don't know if I want to because it's repetitive, or we're going to break this bad boy out and make a comparison video between the Honda and the Suzuki. But, ooh, we have an issue here. Anyway, it's just condensation. This here carport roof. There's dog. But let's go ahead and do our first comparison. Just, you know, as a bonus, cold start. Okay, we'll do the Suzuki first. Fuel injected, has choke. We'll choke it and everything. Okay, let's put it in neutral. Let's see how she starts. No throttle. We go to Lake Hauser or we have a day bashing that thing compared to the Rubicon. It's gonna be a good video either way. Would any of you guys be interested in a three-wheeler video? Uh, pretty good running machine right there. Been sitting for months. Probably still crank right up though. There you guys go. It looks factory almost, you know? Good thing I'm a roofer and I got the tools and the flat pancake screws to fix it and do everything I need to do to take care of that. Here's what it looks like with the wheels painted like that. I think it looks pretty sharp. So today's video it is. And then if I do end up going to Hauser, uh, that'll be a totally separate video. But anyways, hope you guys enjoy this video. This is gonna be Suzuki King Quad 400 versus Honda Rubicon 520. Now I know before you say anything, this is not fair. I know, I know. I should be comparing a Suzuki 500, but I'll mention some key things a 500 has that that doesn't. And then I'm basically we're just gonna compare these two. But a 420 Rancher solid axle is more comparable to that than this. But we don't have one of those, so we're gonna compare these. So right here we've got a 2020 Honda Rubicon 520. Uh, it's a four-wheel drive with front differential lock. It's foot shift and it's IRS over here we have a 2017 Suzuki King Quad 400 that's a solid rear axle um, it's got a belt drive it's got four-wheel drive but it don't have diff lock via manual cable uh, pretty standard unit the black that one's red this has got ODI lock on grips that's got ODI lock on grips because, you know, why not? They're the best. 
So let's go ahead and get into it and compare these two units. There's your first introduction. I'm gonna go over some key things between Honda and Suzuki that you know has nothing to do with these two units, but will determine whether or not you want to buy one because it determined it for me right away. Starting out with the Suzuki, uh, there's a key difference here. This is a belt drive. That's a foot shift. Not only is this a belt drive, it's a crappy belt drive, okay? It's got 638 miles on it, never been rode in a whole lot of water, nothing. Barely even been rode by my dad, okay? Look at that, I mean, yeah, I've seen some mud, but you could tell, I mean, you could tell it's not been just mud road like crazy for being a 2017. Uh, belt already stinks and smokes and slips and all kinds of garbage. Uh, this thing over here has got over twice as many miles. No, it don't, almost. No, yeah, it's over twice as many miles now with the foot shift. Not a single issue with that, of course. Uh, the Suzuki does not have power steering, which is just this model. Of course, you can get power steering, but it's very hard to steer. This has power steering. I've got a headlight pod up there, headlights down there. He's got basic headlights down here. And then if you look at the bumpers, okay, this is one thing that the 500 Suzuki sucks at even worse. This is the Rubicon, okay? Bumper's pretty nice. I mean, it ain't the most solid thing, but for as much pushing and pulling on it as it's seen, it's doing pretty good. You got these two bars right here, protecting your headlights and corner plastic. You got these two main supports here that are backed by steel about that thick going up the back. You got this right here. It's a pretty decent pull bar. I've never bent it yet. Of course, I haven't been really stuck, you know. That bumper's pretty nice, okay? The 420 Rancher, the only difference is this looks a little different. And this bar stops right here. It doesn't wrap all the way around. So it looks more like that. But on the 420 Rancher, it goes up all the way. So it protects all this. This does not have that protection. And on the 500, it has no protection. It's just plastic. So I don't know why the 500 has something less than this thing's got more, you know. But that bumper's better than the 500. That bumper's better than the 500, the 750, the 400, all of them. Uh, this one comes with these nice tires right here, Max's tires. The Ranchers come with a smaller version of those. They're not quite as nice. Uh, still better than what this comes on and the 750 and the 500. They all come on them ugly, however you say it, car aisle, whatever they are. Ugly, cheap tires that go flat. Um, yeah, let's see what else we can get into on here. The Rancher shares the same feature. That right there, U-joint is exposed. That U-joint is protected by a boot back in there. Let me see if I can show you. Uh, ranchers are sealed like that. None of the Suzuki's are sealed. They're all open. You can look at that U-joint, it's all rusty and nasty. Uh, this one's got rear drum brakes. It's got disc. Rancher has drum too, just like that. Same, th same exact thing. Not exactly, but close. Um, you turn your lights on through your key, which is annoying instead of having a separate switch because you always accidentally cut your machine off when you cut them off. You got your kill switch. You got a choke lever, which is kind of from like 2005. High beam, low beam. Good front brakes. Okay, now that's the next thing, okay? The brakes on this thing work 10 times better than that. The front brakes stop you instantly compared to that. But these pads have already been changed at 600 miles and they were metal on metal. So the stock pads suck. So I put EBCs on there. That one's on its second set of pads. They were replaced at about a thousand miles, I believe. Maybe a little more than that I got out of them. Uh, front diff on this thing looks pretty beefy. Also your vent line stops right there. That one's ran all at a headlight pod, not factory, of course. The racks, this rack is very small doesn't have any hook points and doesn't have anything to stop anything from sliding on the front this rack is bent uh, has no hook points has very small thing in the back the Rubicon's got these big hooks big bar across the back big rack uh, the front rack also pretty large uh, you ruined it over there it's got hook points and a small bar in here in the front now if you look at your weight capacity what is this is this a front cargo limit 99 pounds what is that uh, rear cargo capacity is 
187. Rear cargo on here is 132. Front cargo on here, only 66 pounds. Now tell me that's not pathetic. 99.66. Now I know this video is gonna be long, not short, but this is a very in-depth review. You saw at the beginning of the video the cold start, okay? If you live in anywhere cold, this machine can sit for five months, turn a key, fires right up. This one here, sat for a day, won't crank. It wouldn't crank when I went back in there to crank it after it sat, shut off for five seconds. Definitely not as reliable as a Honda Rubicon, as far as cranking. We got our Mexican friend here. He just bought him a Foreman 500. Looks pretty sweet. Now give us a review what you got real fast. We got a 2011 Honda Ford 500. Everything's been painted. Looks pretty good. Exhaust, wheels, tires, foot shift. Yeah. Dual snorkel, don't know really what's going on there. But it works. So upon investigation, it's got 1,135 hours and 13,200 miles. That's the highest mileage Honda I've ever seen in person. Still runs though, minty. If we can get it to crank, gotta fix the battery first. Gotta eat me some sorrel and I'll pick it right back up, boy. All right, guys, it's about 30 minutes later. Sorry I had some interruptions, even though it didn't mean nothing to you. Uh, let's get back into our video here. Let's see where we left off. I can't really remember. I think we we're talking about reliability, something along those lines. Uh, reliability, not, okay, besides the cold starts, okay, this one wins in the cold starts. Um, this one sucks at cold starting. Reliability, this one here is 1,200 miles, not a single issue besides the axle. That's because I ripped a boot and broke the axle. Uh, no big deal. Reliability here, this one has solenoid or starter issues already at 600 miles. Sometimes you have to click this 100,000 times to get the start. Uh... Other than that, it's never broke yet. I mean, smoke's already for some reason at whatever amount of miles that are on it. Uh, 630. Uh, you can't bounce it off for Evolimeter like you can a Honda. It doesn't, it doesn't bounce. It just stops, which is kind of good. kind of keeps you from destroying it. Uh, radiator, uh, this one's water cooled, this one's air or uh, oil cooled. That's kind of disgusting. Oil cooled versus air cooled. Uh, this one's got these wheels and tires on it. The 25 inch Zillas kind of suck though. Should have went with like 26, 28. Uh, these are here, stock. I don't have anything fancy. The Suzuki's top speed, if I'm not mistaken, is like 50-ish, I want to say. I can't even freaking remember. It's like 48 or 50, something like that. That thing's 48, just because, you know, it's a utility quad. It doesn't need to go fast. Um, this one's got a super low, low range, though. I would have to give it that. Of course, I got a foot shift, so what's the matter? Uh, this one, I like the torque. You can just step on it, and it'll go. You know, it'll just take off. This one right here, you got to floor it, and it just bogs and takes a second and finally goes wants to whatever kicks in i guess the clutches and everything now i'm going to talk about basic maintenance this four right here is so simple to work on the front diff and rear diff both share the same size drain plug and fill and fill uh nut size uh to change the oil you pop these plastics off takes you about 45 seconds max to pop the plastic off. You can access the battery, all the fuses, uh, the whole top end, uh, all your electronics, uh, oil filter. An oil filter takes 3.8 millimeters, pops right out. Very simple. You don't have to pop any plastic tabs. Very easy to maintain. Uh, let me show you inside here. Okay, you pop the seat off. Let's see what you can see from here. Okay, you can see your. Uh, fuel pump, I guess. You can see your uh, valve cap, whatever thingy. You can see your air box, and look how easy the air box is to open. Two tabs and four things. See the Suzuki's under the seat. 
two tabs there you got to fight it to get it out you got to take this off just to look at your air filter uh you can't see anything on here um changing the oil okay it's a pain in the butt you got to pop off these side covers plastic tab uh plastic tab plastic tab plastic tab plastic tab and i believe there's normally a screw in it but i replaced them with plastic tabs yeah look plastic tab plastic tab none of them went back in right plastic tab plastic tab plastic tab okay and then to get your oil filter after you take off all those plastic tabs it's in the front in a very tight spot that you can't clean up before you pull it out so you don't get dirt in it it's a round cartridge filter thingy whatever very hard to get to uh the drain plug on the thing i can't remember what it was i think it was an allen key or something stupid uh so the oil filter is already painted about to get to and then the diff the drain plugs uh, allen key and the fill bolts a different size there's four different sized allen keys to change your diff fluid okay and then i smashed my finger changing the brakes because uh what was weird about the brakes i can't even remember there's something freaking stupid about them you look at them until they're stupid so i was just getting the allen key off look at his fingernail just not coming back that's from working on the suzuki i never did that on a honda so that must mean something i did that change in the brakes had a breaker bar on allen key snapped bam ran to the ball joint freaking about broke my finger off uh, yeah so ease of working on it that thing has it beat times 10 i've had an old suzuki i had a uh 2001 king quad or quad master 500 extremely aggravating to work on this one's easy that one's got a vent line for the gas tank that one's got vented through the gas tank not through the cap kind of nice uh this one's got manual four-wheel drive the rancher also has manual four-wheel drive never had an issue out of that system the rubicon has electronic four-wheel drive which is prone to issues uh your gauges your uh display on here is pretty basic shows your fuel odometer miles per hour trip odometer time hours and that's it okay no service log this one here tells you hello honda uh miles per hour what gear you're in fuel at one time time odometer trip temp hours service records still not the most advanced but definitely better than that uh your parking brake on here is pretty simple to put on and off uh what else here i'm trying to think of some other things as far as comfort i can't tell you because it's not fair i can't compare uh 500 suzuki to this because i don't have one but if you compare that to this this right here after you ride this you ride this with power steering the comfortable seat and irs you get on this it's hard to steer your arms are tired the seat is hard as a freaking rock horribly hard seat uh very uncomfortable very stiff uh turning radius sucks uh honda's turning radius kind of sucks too uh but if i do compare 400 i rode 400 they're they're way more comfortable than this seat's more comfortable this is probably a very uncomfortable machine compared to the honda overall <sighs> what else what else storage okay now i'm gonna pretend that the rubicon storage is not here okay this is not here because this is rubicon we're comparing disgusting we, we want to compare a rancher so the honda rancher has this rear storage here just like you know the rubicon i think it's a little smaller a little different suzuki has zero storage whatsoever i'm pretty sure the 2020 honda rancher has this i'm not sure though to be honest, I could. Well, I got brutally interrupted there uh, by phone call, but I'm pretty sure the 2020 Rancher has this. I, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know. I don't think it does. I don't know. Uh, we got a Honda Rancher meeting up with us today, though, also, as well as Brandon and Erasmo. We got a guy named Devin. He's on a yellow Rancher 420 IRS. Last I knew. Hopefully, he still is because it's a pretty nice four wheeler. Also, I desperately need some tires. If anybody wants to send me tires, donate me money, whatever you want to do, help my broke butt give me some tires, okay? Uh, I don't have any tires around here anywhere. Uh, the only tire I have are these. I don't really want to run these. These are too hot for the market. I really 
I don't want to show off, so I can't really wear I can't really use those. Looking for like a 28 or a 30. I'm really leaning towards like a 30 now, though. Like a 30 inch Aztec, 31 inch Outlaw, something like that. I was going to just go a 28 Zilla, but I don't think that's what you guys want. I think you guys want better. Now, if you race these two units side by side, this one's going to smoke that one. I don't know what the 500 would do to me. It'd probably leave me. I mean, Hondas are pretty slow. That's deer blood on that one. Yuck. I'd like to point one more thing out. The switch, keep that in your head. And that switch are the same exact switch, okay? Honda has had the same switch for 35 years. Now tell me that doesn't mean something that they know what's up. I mean, they keep what's good, they keep what works. I think that's gonna do it for this video. Let me know what you guys wanna see next. If you wanna see more videos of that or this, uh, let me know in the comments down below. I hope you guys enjoy this little comparison and review of these two units. Thanks for watching and please leave a like and subscribe for more. Give me to 2,500 subscribers. Uh, see if this video can get ooh, 50 likes. All right. Thanks for watching.